Hi everyone, welcome back to English with Emma. In this video, we're going to look at the first conditional. You'll learn the structure, when to use the first conditional. We'll also look at some alternatives to if, like unless, supposing, as long as. We'll look at polite requests and we'll also look at inversion in the first conditional. I hope that you find the video useful and if you do then it would be great if you could uh, give it a like and if you'd like to see more why not subscribe to the channel it's free let's get started let's start by looking at the structure of the first conditional so in the if clause we have if plus the present simple tense and in the main clause will or will not plus the infinitive if it rains today i will wear a jacket we can also reverse it and start with the main clause will or will not plus the infinitive followed by the if clause if plus the present simple i will wear a jacket if it rains today now there's no change in the meaning here the only difference is that when you start with the if clause, you need to use a comma. If it rains today, comma, I will wear a jacket. Or I will wear a jacket if it rains today, without a comma. Now, instead of will, we can also use may, might, or can. So what's the difference? Well, will indicates that we're certain. May or might indicates that we are not certain. And can or will be able to indicates possibility. Let's have a look at an example. If it is sunny this weekend, I will go to the beach. 100%, I'm very sure that I will do this activity if it's sunny. I may or I might have a picnic in the park. 50-50, I'm not sure about this. I can or I will be able to sit out in the garden. This is an activity that will be possible for me. I don't know if I will do it or not, but it will be possible to sit out in the garden. Let's have a look at the contracted forms in the main clause. I will can be contracted to I'll. And on the right here, you just see the, the phonetic pronunciation of I'll. We will, we'll. You will, you'll. They will, they'll. He will. He'll, she will, she'll, it will, it'll. And if you're using a negative, will not can be contracted to won't. Now, it's much more usual when speaking to use the contracted forms. So I'm going to say them again and uh, it would be a good idea to repeat them. I'll, we'll, you'll, they'll, he'll, she'll, it'll, won't. So when do we use the first conditional? We use the first conditional to talk about a possible or likely future state or situation. And we use if, or we can use unless. Unless is like saying if not. So now let's see some examples. If I fail my exam, I will be upset. Now, I can say the opposite, reverse the situation. If I don't fail my exam, I won't be upset. 
or rather, I will be happy. So the first example, we start with the positive um, in the if clause, if I fail. And in the second, we've got the negative form, if I don't fail. Now, let's look at unless. Unless I fail my exam, I won't be upset. Unless is the same as saying if not. So unless I fail is like saying if I don't fail. So you'll see that the main clause in the negative with if is the same as the example with unless. Let's see some more examples. If you hurry up, we won't be late. So here we've got the positive form of the verb in the if clause. To hurry up means to move faster. If you don't hurry up, we will be late. So here we've got the negative in the if clause. And let's look at unless. Unless you hurry up, we will be late. So if you don't hurry up and unless you hurry up have the same meaning and that is that we will be late. If you finish work late, we can't watch a film. If you don't finish work late, we can't watch a film. Unless you finish work late, we can watch a film. So again, if you don't finish work late, and unless you finish work late, have the same meaning. If it rains later, we can't have a picnic. If it doesn't rain later, we can have a picnic. And with unless, unless it rains later, we can have a picnic. So if it doesn't rain later and unless it rains later, have the same meaning. And that is that we can have a picnic. That will be the result. Now, we can also use the first conditional to talk about a possible or likely present state. And again, we can use if or unless. So if you are hungry, if you're hungry now, I will make you a sandwich. If you aren't hungry, I won't make you a sandwich. So let's look at unless. Unless you are hungry, I won't make you a sandwich. So again, if you aren't hungry, if followed by a negative, and unless you are hungry, unless followed by a positive form of the verb, this has the same meaning. If you want to go home, I will call you a taxi. If you don't want to go home, I won't call you a taxi. And unless you want to go home, I won't call you a taxi. If you understand, I won't explain again. If you don't understand, I will explain again. Unless you understand, I will explain again. If there's enough food, I won't go to the shops. If there isn't enough food, I will go to the shops. Unless there is enough food, I will go to the shops. Okay, let's have one more. If that dress is on sale, I will buy it. If that dress isn't on sale, I won't buy it. And unless that dress is on sale, I won't buy it. So again, if that dress isn't on sale and unless that dress is on sale, have the same meaning. So unless is like saying if not.
Now, we can also use the first conditional to talk about a future condition we are sure will be fulfilled. And in this case, we can use when or as soon as. So let's have a look. When I get home, I will call you. Or as soon as I get home, I will call you. So what's the difference between when and as soon as? It's just a question of how quickly you will complete the action. <clears throat> when I get home, I will call you means that at some time shortly after I get home, I will call you. But as soon as I get home, I will call you means that calling you will be the first thing that I do. I will do it immediately when I arrive home. When they have the test results, they will write to you. Or as soon as they have the test results, they will write to you. Um, again, the only difference in the meaning here is that with as soon as, they will do the action immediately. So they will receive the test results and before doing anything else, they will write to you. When we receive the payment, we will post the package. As soon as we receive the payment, we will post the package. So with as soon as you receive the payment, and then you immediately post the package. You don't do any other activity first. When you give me your assignments, you can go home. As soon as you give me your assignments, you can go home. So again, as soon as means that in the moment that you give me your assignment, then immediately you can go home. We can also use other alternatives to if that make the condition stronger. Provided, providing, as long as, on condition that. Now, you'll see these alternatives to if if you're studying for the B2 exam, that's the FCE upper intermediate exam or if you're studying for the C1 exam or the CHI um, advanced level exam. So provided, providing, as long as, and on condition that, these are the same as saying only if. So we use them for a very strong condition. And they're only used in the first conditional. We don't use them in the second or third conditional. Provided you return it, I'll lend you my bike. I'll lend you my bike, provided you return it. Now, I've put the reversed example here because it's actually more usual when we use provided, providing, as long as, or on condition that. It's more usual that you start with the main clause and follow it with the if clause, in which case you don't need the comma. So let's see some more examples. Providing you get home by midnight, you can go to the party. You can go to the party providing you get home by midnight. And uh, again, providing means only if. So if you don't get home by midnight, you cannot go to the party. As long as I wake up early, I'll have time for breakfast. I'll have time for breakfast as long as I wake up on time or early. And as long as, you can also say so long as. I'll have time for breakfast so long as I wake up on time. On condition that you finish all your work, you can go home early. If you don't finish all your work, you can't go home early. This is a very strong condition. You can go home early on condition that you finish all your work. 
We can also use the first conditional to say something will happen regardless of the condition. And we use even if, even if it rains, I'll go to the beach. So this means that I will go to the beach in any circumstances. If it rains, I will still go to the beach. It doesn't matter. Even if she goes to bed late, she'll get up early. So she will get up early regardless. It doesn't matter if she goes to bed early or she goes to bed late. She will still get up early. Even if we don't like the food, we'll eat it. So this means that we will eat the food 100%. If we don't like the food, we will still eat the food. Even if I catch this train, I won't arrive in time for the meeting. So I'm not going to arrive on time for the meeting. Even if I catch this train, it won't make any difference to the, uh, the outcome. Now we can also use the conditional for commands with the imperative. So, if you're still hungry, eat some more food. Now in this case, we don't use will, we simply use the, the imperative form of the verb. If you're tired, go to bed. If you like the shoes, buy them. If you see Anna, tell her to call me. We can use the first conditional to speculate about a future condition. Are you proposing or wrestling? So this would usually appear as two separate questions. Supposing And then you'd follow it with another question to seek more information. So supposing, or what if, you don't get the job. What will you do? Who will you call? Where will you go? How will you feel? Let's have another example. Supposing, or what if... Supposing you miss the bus, what will you do? Who will you call? When will you arrive? Will you take a taxi? We can also use the first conditional for polite requests. And we use, if you would like to, So we have if followed by the subject, would like to, and then the infinitive. If you'd like to take a seat, I'll let the manager know you are waiting. If you'd like to wait here, I'll get you a coffee. If you'd like to follow me, I'll show you to your room. So this would be used in formal situations like when you check into a hotel or if you have an appointment with somebody then you might need to use this polite form of request we can also use inversion in the first conditional now this is something that you will need to be aware of and be familiar with if you're studying advanced level english so the C1 or CHI level or above C2. Um, inversion makes the conditional more formal. And in the first conditional, we use should. So, in a normal conditional clause, in the first conditional, we have if plus the subject plus present thinking. And in the inverted clause, then we don't use if, we use should, followed by the subject and then the infinitive. If we finish early, 
we will have time for some games. So this is a normal first conditional structure. Should we finish early, we will have time for some games. So here you have the inverted conditional clause. Notice that the main clause doesn't change. We will have time for some games. This is the same. So the only thing that changes is the conditional clause. We change if to should, and we use the We should instead of if in the infinitive. If it snows today, we will make a snowman. Should it snow today, we will make a snowman. So if becomes should, and we use the infinitive form as a verb. So if you're using he, she, or it as the subject, as in this case, then there will be a difference in the verb form. We don't use the S, just the infinitive. If we are successful, we will celebrate. Should we be successful, we will celebrate. Now there is one more way that we can um, use inversion, and that is with should plus the imperative. This is the normal conditional structure. Should you require any further assistance, don't hesitate to call. Now, the imperative, this is quite typical with inversion. The two often go together because it's used a lot in formal situations. This phrase, for example, would be typical at the end of a letter, a formal letter, a formal email. Um, something if you require any further assistance or if you require any further information. Require is a more formal way of saying need. If you need any further help would be the informal way of saying it. If you feel cold, put on a jacket. Should you feel cold, put on a jacket. If you see Jane, tell her I want to speak to her. Should you see Jane, tell her I want to speak to her. If you feel unwell again, call the doctor. Should you feel unwell again, call the doctor. So that's pretty much everything that you need to know about the first conditional. Thanks for watching guys. And if you did find the video useful, then please give it a like. And if you'd like to see more, then why not subscribe to the channel? Uh, that's all for now. So I'll see you next time. Have a great day. Bye.